हॅलो फ्रेंड्स माय नेम इज चिन्मय देशपांडे आय एम फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजिनिअरिंग टुडे वी आर गोईंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अ टॉपिक रिलेटेड टू सोल्युशन ऑफ लिनियर सायमल्टेनियस इक्वेशन इन दॅट वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट कन्सेप्ट ऑफ फुल पिवोटिंग अँड पार्शल पिवोटिंग ना वाय दिस पार्शल पिवोटिंग कम्स इन टू द पिक्चर वॉट एव्हर एलिमेंट्स इन द डायगोनल ऑफ अ मॅट्रिक्स बाय विच अदर एलिमेंट्स आर डिवायडेड इन द अल्गोरिदम such as gauss jordan elimination is called as a pivot element now partial pivoting is the process of interchanging of rows and full pivoting is the interchanging of both rows and the columns please remember this is very important partial uh, pivoting means we are only deal with interchanging of rows and in case of full pivoting we have to change interchange both the rows and the columns why it is to be done in order to get a correct answer so please see when performing a gauss elimination method the diagonal element that one uses during elimination process is called as a pivot so if a gaussian elimination in this form will fail if pivot is zero in this situation we need to do a row transformation so what are the problems which will be created if we haven't done partial pivoting even if the pivot is not identically zero a small value can result in a big round of error and for very large matrices one can easily lose all accuracy in the solution hence to avoid these round of errors which are arising from the small pivots row transformations row interchange are made and this technique is called as a partial pivoting so it is in contrast to that of a complete pivoting whereas in case of complete pivoting or full pivoting as i discussed earlier we have to uh, interchange both rows and the columns now let me give you one simple example why we are doing partial pivoting or any kind of pivoting what is the use of it for example suppose if i have a equation like this 0x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 equal to 8 9x1 plus 5x2 plus 7x3 equal to minus 3 5x1 minus 2x2 plus 6x3 equal to 0 so in the matrix form suppose if i want to write i will write it as 0 2 3 this will be your constant 8 then 9 5 7 this will be minus 3 and 5 minus 2 6 here it will be a 5 so while solving a problem by gauss elimination or by uh, let's say gauss elimination method we have to keep this element as a 1 but unfortunately if you see this element which is there first element in the row 1 it is 0 so when we do a back substitution and suppose if i want to find it out the value of x1 then it will be very difficult because let's say suppose by solving let us assume that we will get this answer suppose uh, this will be your 0 okay let me write it as this will be 3 or uh, let me take it as a, this is a 0 this is 0 this is 2 suppose you will get it as this is uh, 4 okay suppose this will be your value as a 0 this will be 3 this will be 2 suppose this is your 6 and uh, your these value here if you see these values are 0 here and if you get the answer as a 5 so what to do here if you compare it you will get 2 x 3 will be equal to 4 so by using back substitution you will be able to find it out value of x3 equal to 2 here if you go for row number 2 then it will be what 3x2 plus 2x3 will be equal to 6 so if you substitute this x3 here you will be able to find it out value of x2 but if you see as this element is 0 division by 0 will create a big problem so therefore here we have to go for a partial pivoting now as discussed earlier there might be a problem if pivot element is zero it induces a division by zero in a backward substitution or back backward process also because of that round of errors are introduced if a pivot element is very small uh, as compared to that of other elements so therefore always better to determine the largest available coefficient before normalizing so the rows that can be switched so that a largest element is the pivot element this is called as partial pivoting pivoting will avoid division by zero 
as well as it reduces round off errors please remember this will be a very important thing so how to do a partial pivoting let's say let us consider these three equations 4x plus y plus z equal to 5 x plus 6y plus 2z equal to 19 this will be second equation minus x minus 2y minus 5z equal to 10 this is third equation so first what you have to do please check coefficient of a x you have to check only magnitude no need to go for a sign and out of these three equations the equation those have a coefficient of x will be larger treat that as a equation number 1 here we have written the equation that has a higher magnitude of a x which, which will be considered as a equation number 1 so out of these three if you see this first equation has a coefficient which is 4 which is larger than coefficient of x which is 1 and coefficient of x which is minus 1 don't consider here sign you take it as a magnitude so therefore your first equation which you have to treat while solving Gauss elimination method after partial pivoting will be 4x plus y plus z now leave that equation check for remaining two equations and check coefficient of a y for those equation we have higher value of a coefficient of a y treat that as a second equation so if you see from these two equations x plus 6y plus 2z equal to 19 and minus x minus 2y minus 5z equal to 10 out of these two if you check a coefficient of a y you will observe that the second equation has a larger magnitude of a y that is 6y so therefore here if you see let me write it here if you see what it will be the equation equation will be x plus 6y plus 2z equal to 19 here unfortunately i have written 5 it should not should not be 5 it should be 6 here 6 is the highest uh, term or, or coefficient of a y so therefore you have to take this equation as a equation number 2 and whatever equation number will be that we have to take it as a equation number 3 so what you observe here if you write it in a matrix format you will be able to see this is 4 1 1 5 second equation will be 1 6 2 19 this will be after partial pivoting minus 1 minus 2 minus 5 10 so if you see this value it is greater as compared to these two so it will not create any problem of a round off error so please remember while choosing the coefficients we have to compare according to only magnitude don't go for a sign i will take other example also let me take a second example suppose if i have an equation like this 3x minus 2y plus 6z equal to 10 second equation is 6x minus 3y plus 2z equal to 15 let me write this equation and suppose third equation is 3x minus 6y plus uh, let me write it as a z which will be equal to 20 so while doing partial pivoting what we have to do which equation should be considered as a first first of all check coefficients of a x to those equation we have a larger coefficient of a x magnitude wise consider that as a equation number one so if you see out of these three equations 6x minus 3y plus 2z equal to 15 it has a higher magnitude or a higher coefficient of x so we will treat this as a equation number one so leave this equation now check for a coefficient of a y for remaining two equations these are remaining two equations and check only magnitude don't go for a sign so if you observe we will get 3x minus 6y plus z equal to 20 it will be equation number 2 because coefficient of y is more and remaining equation will be 3x minus 2y plus 6z equal to 10 consider this as a equation number 3 so this is the process of partial pivoting now please remember in which methods we have to do a partial pivoting so first method is nothing but Gauss elimination in the Gauss elimination compulsory we have to do a partial pivoting this is your direct method and second is nothing but your Gauss Jacobi method which is indirect or iterative method 
and third one is nothing but gauss seidel method which will again come under indirect or iterative method so this is what is the concept of pivoting and partial pivoting please remember we will be doing only a partial pivoting because in a partial pivoting we have to interchange only row and in case of full pivoting we need to interchange both rows and the column so this is what is the concept of a pivoting thank you for watching this video